how do we perceive the world? Is what we see what there really is? Is there even an external world out there? Will Tottenham ever win a game? These are some questions that many great philosophers have spent their entire lives trying to answer. But what do the general public think? Professor Salman Ella Salman, known for being patient zero and Vietnam. So, what is your theory of perception, my friend? What you see is what is there, because you can touch it and stuff. Okay, very interesting. So you're more leaning to the idea of direct realism, right? More. The idea of direct realism? More. And more, and more. Oh, don't worry about it. Um, so, you must believe in the external world, of course, right? Yeah, yeah. Great. So, there are many criticisms of this daft and stupid theory of perception, starting off with the time lag argument. The time lag argument states that everything that we perceive is slightly delayed. And therefore, if everything that we perceive is slightly delayed <laughs> then, then it cannot be it cannot be what there really is out there another argument to it is the idea of perceptual variation which states that all objects that we see change depending on the circumstances and position that we are in therefore what we perceive is not what there really is out there Sites known for being the best boxer in Kazakhstan. So tell me, what is your theory of perception? We see, man. Like I just, I just don't really, I don't know any of the theories of perception. You know, I don't know what you were talking about. But like, all I know is there. I think there's something out there, but I, I just, I couldn't tell you. You know, if I, if I'm seeing the same things or what's out there. You know. Oh, okay. I see what you're getting at. So it sounds to me quite similar to in the theory of indirect realism. Am I correct in thinking Wait, that? Wait, you, you see, man, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what you're, what you're talking about, really. I don't, I don't know the names of any of these theories, what you're talking about, but, you know, I didn't start no philosophy in school, but I dropped out, actually, but, um, yeah, I, I, I guess you could say that. So, you must then believe in the external world in a different way to a direct realist, right? Yeah, yeah, I'd say, I'd agree with that, yeah, I'd say that. I don't know, man. Thank you very much. So, there are... Quite a few criticisms of this rather poor theory of perception. Not as bad as direct realism, of course, but still pretty poor. The two main ones are the nature of the external world and the existence of the external world. The issue with the nature of the external world is if there is an external world, how do we know what's in it? Like, what is, is it similar to what we see IRL? There's no way of knowing. A second problem with indirect realism is um, the existence of the external world. If we have no connection to the external world in any way, how do we even know it exists? States, uh, you cannot imagine an apple that is not being imagined. 
It cannot be done, and yet we only perceive what we can imagine. And under the indirect oh, muscle, under the indirect realism, we seem to see this external world, but we cannot know the external world exists. So logically, as an empiricist, it cannot. So, and then you say, oh, but then what about the continued nature of things? It's, I say, imagine this apple. I say, imagine this apple without imagining it. You cannot, but then you say, why does the apple continue to exist when it's no longer there? And I say, God, God perceives all things. Barclay was a weapon, so am I. Um, God perceives all things. We perceive it with him. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, with this theory, it's a pretty solid theory, however, there are a few criticisms, such as the use of God. In idealism, the use of God is often suggested to plug the gaps in the theory, but apart from that, it's a pretty good theory. Thank you very much.